and joining us now here in studio, Andrea Horvath, leader of the Ontario NDP and the MPP for Hamilton Centre, and welcome back to TVO, Andrea. Thank you, Steve. Pleasure, pleasure to have you here. Let's just, uh, for those who haven't heard all the details, share some of what you and the Premier worked out in the, your uh, deal that managed to stave off a provincial election. For example, uh, the 2% surtax on those making more than $500,000 a year is a highlight of this budget agreement. $242 million in funding for child care you managed to get, $20 million for northern and rural hospitals, and welfare and disability benefits boosted by 1% at a cost of $55 million. Uh, first question, why those things? You could have asked for anything. Why those things? Uh, well, in fact, we, we did ask for a number of other things, uh, and unfortunately, you can't get everything when it comes to these kinds of uh, processes. So we had a number of asks on the table uh, and uh, had a couple of weeks of conversations between the House leader uh, of, of our both, both of our parties as well as our chiefs of staff and then finally, Dalton and I took it down to the last, uh, the last few items. So it started with staff, and then you yeah. two hammered it out at the end of the day. Yep. What's he like to negotiate with? He's a very decent human being. I have uh, no problems with the pre Premier on a personal level. He's uh, pretty straightforward, pretty straight up. Um, very cordial, I think, is how I've described him in the past. It was uh, it was interesting. I mean, he had uh, he had his uh, you know what he wanted to make uh, make happen, and I had what I wanted to make happen, and uh, we figured it out. Do you know why, in the end, he he, for lack of a better expression, gave on these issues here? Uh, I, I really don't know, and that's something you could uh, talk to him on. There's a couple of things we were surprised about uh, that we didn't make gains in, particularly Ontario Northland, which is a, an important part of the fr uh, infrastructure for the North that is going to get privatized now, and we're a little bit worried. We're very, very worried about that. Uh, the horse racing industry, again, people characterize that as uh, you know, as uh, something to do, uh, I think they called it, um, what did they call it? Healthcare or horses, I think the Liberals <laughs> okay. characterized it. Mm -hmm. But it is an important uh, industry uh, in the agricultural communities in rural communities that were were concerned that losing those jobs in that industry is going to have a, a big impact in places where you really can't just create jobs very easily at all so so he conceded on these things yeah. what did you really 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 want but in the end you had to concede on if you wanted to get an agreement well interestingly enough uh, and this might sound counterintuitive but one of the things I wanted the most I took off the table the earliest and that was the HST off home heating uh, for me it was extremely important because I went in to this conversation with three major issues at the top of my mind one is affordability I wanted to see life more affordable for folks in this budget uh, two is a, a fairness issue I wanted to see the budget uh, be made more fair so that everybody was sharing in the the burden of uh, slaying the deficit if you will uh, and I wanted to see a focus on jobs uh, the affordability piece for me was uh, was wrapped around the HST off home heating uh, and it's something that I of course campaigned on and really wanted to see uh, but it became very clear in the initial conversations that the government was simply not going to acquiesce they were not going to give that one up uh, so I thought the uh, mature thing to do is to acknowledge that and to say fine I'll take that away with with you know with big concerns knowing that people would be disappointed knowing that I, it was disappointing for me uh, to have to say uh, that that was the thing I needed to do to give air to the rest of the conversation well I know those making half a million bucks a year were looking forward to having that HST taken off their home you know electricity bills they didn't get that they got this surtax instead you know that economists are saying now though that you think you're gonna get 400 million from this 2% surtax on on rich people but you're really not because they're just going to figure out better ways to shield their income does this at the end of the day help solidify in people's minds that Ontario is a high tax jurisdiction rather than getting the money that you actually want for the programs that you want it for? I don't think so. I mean, I think uh, that's a bit of a cynical way of looking at it. I think that, uh, yes, there may be some who, uh, who spend their time worrying about a couple thousand more dollars when they're earning, you know, millions every year. I, I tend to think that there's a lot more who understand that Ontario is going through tough times uh, and, uh, and it's, it's just the fair thing to do to ask them to pitch in a little bit more. I mean, I didn't see the stock markets crash. I didn't see an exodus, an exodus of, uh, of well-off people leave the province yesterday. Uh, and again, uh, I think there are some people that see uh, that measure as an unfair measure. I, I see it the opposite way, and I think most Ontarians do as well. On our website today, theagenda.tvo.org, you will see, if you read it, a comment from a very well-off businessman in this province who says, look, there's only so much money to go around, and if you want to tax it from me, that's fine, but that means I probably now don't have that money to give to charity. Uh, on the one hand, you have this victory, but has it come at others' expense? 
I don't, I don't know, Steve. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think that uh, people that uh, donate to charity uh, will continue to donate to charity. Uh, they get good uh, tax write-offs for charity donations as well, let's not forget. Uh, but I, I do think that what, uh, what this has done is it's given um, a new revenue stream, if you will. And yes, the government's saying all of that revenue is going to go into deficit reduction. Uh, I would have preferred it to go to shoring up the health care system, for example, uh, but that's the decision uh, Mr. McGinty made. But I do think uh, having that conversation about what it takes to provide a good health care system and a good education system, make sure that our province is uh, strong and that it's working well for people, uh, I think that's a, a good conversation to have. How do you make that happen? Just like the, um, the way the government's been reducing corporate taxes in Ontario, reducing again our revenue stream, I don't think that that's been the right thing to do. It hasn't brought the jobs, uh, hasn't brought the investment, uh, and yet we're losing uh, money to the Treasury. So I think there's lots of conversations that need to continue about our taxation system and how it works and how it doesn't work. Sure, a lot of this is branding though, you'll acknowledge, and uh, the Finance Minister Dwight Duncan is now calling this new tax the NDP surtax. Mm -hmm. Are you happy to wear it? I call it the fairness tax, I'm happy to wear that. <laughs> okay, so when he starts campaigning as the NDP surtax, which I didn't want to do, you know, are you content to be known as the sort of high tax on high income people? Well, I'm, 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 I think I'm going to be happy to be known as someone who tried to bring some fairness to a budget that was generally unfair. I mean, the budget that was brought forward, and, and it still does have a lot of cuts, don't get me wrong, I'm not completely enamored with the budget as it stands. I think we were able to make it a little bit better, but I still think there's a lot of problems with that budget. And we're going to be having that conversation uh, with the Liberals through the, uh, through the process of the legislation itself moving through the House. I've got to tell you, on budget day, and then absolutely leading up up until just the other day when you announced your agreement, I talked to more liberals who were absolutely positively convinced we were going to the polls, we were going to have an election, because they did not see any daylight at all, couldn't figure out how this was going to get done. Did you feel that way too? Well, you know, it's, it's a good question. It's interesting. Uh, I made a decision early on in the process what the end game was. Uh, and for me, the end game was make this budget better or go back to the people. And, uh, and I, I had to have that, um, I think I had to have that sense in my own, um, my own, myself, I had to have that, I had to feel at peace with the idea that we would actually take it as far as going to an election, otherwise you, you can't really be serious in a, in, a, in a discussion, in a negotiation like that. And you had support from your rookie backbenchers on that? I did, I did. In fact, uh, the rookie backbenchers were some of the most adamant about getting a decent deal. Yeah. So they would have been content, potentially, to have been MPPs for all of six months. Uh, they were pretty convinced that uh, if we couldn't make this deal better, uh, they would have uh, kept their seats and we would have had more new Democrats elected. But it wasn't about us. It was really about trying to make it better for the people of the province, which is why uh, I'm pleased with the result, because I really don't believe that the majority of people wanted to go back to the polls. I think they wanted us to try to make it work. They sent us uh, here in October uh, in a minority situation, the Liberals, us, the, and the, the Conservatives. I think it, they told us, we don't want any one party to have all the control. We want you guys to work together, figure it out, do something together for Ontario. And, and that's what at least ourselves and the, and the Liberals were able to do. The Conservatives walked that. away. Yeah, everybody says that. Everybody said, no, we know the public doesn't want an election. But it sounds like you were all prepared to do just that. Mm -hmm. Does that suggest none of you is actually listening to what the electorate is saying enough? No, I mean, I think quite the opposite. We, we spent a, a great deal of time after the budget was tabled, and in fact, uh, we, I was criticized on budget day, you might recall you were there, because uh, I said I was not going to make a snap decision. I was going to take some time to consult with Ontarians. Who criticized you for that? And to, uh, <laughs> I think most fair-minded people thought that was uh, the right thing to do. Uh, well, I mean, and I thought so too, and we did that. We did that exercise. We touched base in one way or another with over 60,000 Ontarians. And it's interesting. A couple of things were very clear. First of all, uh, people said, we don't like this budget. Second of all, they said, thank you for asking us about it. We don't usually get asked about these things. Uh, but the third thing was, and it wasn't overwhelming, uh, but there were more people who said, we don't want another election. We want you to try to go in there and make it better. At what point did you think, okay, we got an agreement. This is going to work out. It didn't all. happen until Monday. Until Monday on when I, day. it came out that day. Uh, on, um, on the weekend, the Premier and I had a, a conversation. Um, we were, you know, we, we, we basically came down to uh, the eyeball to eyeball stare, if you will. Uh, and we both left the table saying, well, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. We both have things to think about. And, uh, and then Monday, it finally, it finally broke. Did you and he 
agree to it at that moment, or did you both have to go back and consult with other people to see whether or not this was okay? Uh, on the Monday, no. We, there was uh, there were my, there was myself and the premier. Our chiefs of staff were with us uh, when the premier uh, provided me with what what he was prepared to do. Uh, I left the room uh, with my chief of staff. We had a little conversation. I came back, pushed for a little bit more, got a tiny bit more, <laughs> uh, but then that was uh, that was it. What was the tiny extra bit you got by coming back in? Oh, I, I haven't actually told anybody the, uh, well, the detail go. of that uh, conversation. The it was the 20 million for hospitals. I had asked the premier. Uh, I, I had actually asked the premier for 100 million dollars for hospitals uh, stabilization, and uh, for particularly for northern and rural hospitals. And um, of course, the 100 million didn't uh, materialize. Um, but they came to the table with 20 million, and I thought that was something right so so on, on on many of these fronts we didn't get everything we wanted mm -hmm. so on some places we didn't get anything we wanted but what i think we ended up with is a, a fairer budget uh and a, a a demonstration to the people of ontario that we're prepared to to do the heavy lifting to make the minority parliament work in our last few minutes here let's tackle a, a couple of things i want to talk about some reaction i've received from new democrat supporters to how you've handled this and i want your view first of all on how you think tim hudak the leader of the conservatives handled it because obviously you said on budget day mm -hmm. We're going to review this. He said on Budget Day, no. As a result, he hasn't really been a part of the conversation over the last three weeks because he came out with a very firm and forceful no right off the top. Mm -hmm. You did things your way. He did things his way. What did you think of the way he handled things? Well, I mean, he had to make the decision himself, and uh, he'll be judged by you know, his, his MVPs, his caucus, his party members, and the public, uh, ultimately. Uh, but I, I'm always the kind of person that, that tries to find solutions. That's what I've always done. Uh, I find my way or the highway approaches really don't, are not very helpful. Now, I mean, so sometimes... You blew it? Well, I, I would, I wouldn't, well, obviously, I didn't think that that was the productive way of doing it. And I don't think that was the way uh, to respect the, the voters who said, make the minority parliament work. Like, do, do things differently for a change. Do politics differently for a change if you can. And I, you know, to be honest, I don't think that the Liberals knew how to do that at first. I think what this, this budget conversation has done, though, is, is shown uh, Dalton McGuinty and shown the Liberal uh, cabinet what it's going to take to keep the minority parliament working here on in because they didn't consult us before they drafted their budget uh, and, and it took uh, a lot in those last couple of days to, to make this happen. Hopefully they've learned that a little more consultation at the front end uh, might, um, might make things a little smoother. You're on Twitter from time to time, I know. From time to time. Are you or is it your staff who does all oh, that? Oh, well, the times when I say, oh, I dropped my Blackberry again, those are, those <laughs> are definitely you. me. <laughs> uh, when I tweeted the details of the agreement that you and Dalton McGinty had come to, I started to get quite a flood of reactions action and some of it was from your supporters and if you look at that monitor over my shoulder you will see uh, here's a sample of what some people had to say so I'm not supporting the NDP anymore this person tweeted I'm done with false promises from Horvath sad after 40 years she has failed us and then another one not one thing in this budget helps me nothing zip nada but my hydro goes up in May and I wait months to see a specialist so done there were some people who thought you broke faith with them what would you say to them well, I would say on some of those big issues, we're not going to stop fighting. I mean, I, I temporarily took the HST off home heating off the, uh, off the table in this conversation, but I've made a commitment to continue uh, to fight that fight. I think the HST doesn't belong on our utilities, and I think that hurts uh, everybody, but particularly those, particularly those struggling uh, even more. And so on some of those big issues, New Democrats are going to continue to fight. I just knew that at this point in time, uh, we weren't going to be able to, uh, to make that happen. So better to set that aside and make other gains. Uh, and I think that that's what we were able to do. Why didn't you vote for the budget? Well, ultimately because the budget, even with the things that we were able to, uh, to change to make it better, is still something I have some real concerns with. I'm not uh, overall happy with the budget uh, of this government. And so um, what we did is, is, I think, make that clear uh, by not supporting it, by saying, yes, we'll allow it to go forward, uh, but we're not going to vote for it because uh, we have some fundamental problems with it. Uh, but what we are going to do is be at the table over the next weeks and months uh, as that bill goes through the legislature, you know, making our amendments and making our suggestions and making our recommendations for change because we also want to see the changes that we've uh, gotten from the government implemented as well. I'm not saying you have to do it this way, but I think when Jack Layton was in the same spot federally that you were in provincially, he did his negotiations with Paul Martin, he got some stuff that he was pretty pleased with, showed up and voted for the budget at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You didn't. 
No, and that's uh, the choice that uh, the caucus and I thought about uh, very carefully. Uh, there's uh, some real uh, concerning things in that budget. Uh, my caucus is concerned about the massive privatization that that, that budget contains, uh, and uh, and we want to reserve the right to uh, to be vo um, vocally speaking against some of those things because we think that they're uh, the wrong direction for Ontario. Gotcha. Andrea Horvath, good of you to show up to TVO tonight. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure, Steve. Thank you. Ontario NDP leader Andrea Horvath. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.